Good morning, welcome back to another video, and today is another day of the PDSA fundraiser. Now just stick around and enjoy the video. Okay, so today we are going to be doing an oldie but a goodie. Now this one is a bit of a weirder farm than I used to do, and this one's actually one of the ones that I used to do on the daily quite a bit. And this is something you can do in, in roughly about five minutes. We're gonna do the entire lap together, but, the thing of note they're actually going for is Dranathis stones and the spheres. Now these ones are from the Blasted Lands and if you need to actually go do this then you come over to the Blasted Lands and you speak to Zadormi which is right here on the map right now. So we'll bring that up and show you. What you're actually going for is the rares in the Blasted Lands in the old version. So if you want to keep your eye out for them. now. One spawn location will be here. This is where a big ass scorpion will be. And there's loads more dotted around the area. It's basically keeping your eyes peeled. And then what you're actually doing is you're farming up those different types of quest items which are in your bag. And basically what you're doing is you're actually gonna be giving those in for a decent amount of transmog. Now, you get the green ones, which is the fragments of the Dranathists, and only give you the green caches. Now, th that is okay. Those ones don't drop an amazing amount of good transmog, but they do give you some good transmog. So if you wanna take the chance, go do that. But if you're doing this farm every single day, it shouldn't be that much of a problem. Now, the next thing of note for this is you're gonna be wanting to look for the spheres. The spheres are the blue ones. Those ones actually do give you a, pretty much they give you 100% of a blue item BOE. Now, this is kind of funny because some of those BOEs sell for a lot, some of them don't. The chain Imper uh, Imperial Chain Vest is one of said item for this, and that's one of the ones that sells for the most when it comes from these caches. Now, a lot of people don't actually do this old world farm anymore, and that is mainly due to the fact that most people just keep it on the wad area for the Zodormi and not go back in time. Failing that, this area that is actually really good for thorium and also uh, herbs as well. So just so you know, that can be something you could do alongside this farm. Multiple farms that you can do in this area and it's pretty dang easy in order to actually do a lot of farming and get a lot of gold from this entire zone. As this is an old world zone so it drops old world stuff that actually does net you in a decent amount of gold. We're currently checking the rares seeing if they are up and then if not we're just going to keep moving on. Currently the rares are pretty damn easy to actually farm up. The only thing of note that you're going to want to be doing is just by flying around the entire zone. What you're going to be wanting to do is flying around the entire zone, picking up all of the rares and seeing if the heavy silken chests are up. Now heavy silken chests are really easy to actually find out where they actually are as all you have to do is go into gather mate so we'll go into the gather mate right now, and then we'll go into treasures, and we go into always show. This will actually pop up on our screen now, and it will show silken treasure chest. So we'll keep that open right there, and it will actually tell us where these treasure chests are on the actual map. And they are handy because they actually go in very nicely with the actual farming route. You're basically going around the entire zone in like a circular motion but all the rares are in specific locations. You can definitely tell when a rare is up as well because they're pretty dang huge. But aside from all of that, I find that this farm is relatively nice to do. It's just one of those ones where you can just do casually. Every single day, I just wake up and do all of that. It's one easy farm in order to do. So we're just gonna be finishing up all of this rare farming and just checking if the rares are up. And if not, we're just carrying on. Now, a lot of these transmog items can be worth a decent amount of gold if you're lucky from the actual caches when you give in those quest items. Failing that, you can actually buy those from the auction house and then trade those in. I typically like to buy the fragments off of the auction house, not really the spheres, uh, due to the fact that the fragments actually sell for a lot less 
and it just makes more sense to just buy them instead of just constantly farming them up. Failing that, I do like to farm up the spheres, and overall, that's basically what you're going to be wanting to do. So, aside from all of that, what do we do now once we've done the route? Well, we're just going to go speak to Kumisha, uh, or Kumisha the Collector. Basically, you're going to want to click the quest item, otherwise he'll provide you with no dialogue, uh, besides this little fascinating thing about orcs, and then trade in those quest items. And we can accept the quest and give it in, so we'll give in that quest, and then it will give us an encrusted emerald chest. And then we can open that up, and it will actually give us an item of note. BOE blue, we didn't get lucky in this one actual giving, and that's only for a short sword or vengeance. But the region market value average is around about 3,500 gold, whereas on my server, which is Argent Dawn, it's around about 200 ish gold, dropping down to about 120 at this moment in time. So you have to be very lucky with this one. So, like most transmog farms and all that stuff. RNG is a factor with this, so just bear that one in mind before you do the farm. Failing that, you can always just sell the fragments on the auction house, and the spheres on the average go for around about 2,000 gold, whereas the fragments sell from anywhere from like a couple of hundred gold to about 500 gold. So just bear that one in mind. But on the daily, this is a very easy farm in order to do, and it nets you in probably a few fragments each and every day, and then one spear every day, or something to that effect. So I'd farm this on the casual, not on an hourly basis, and that's how I would go about making my goal with all of this. Okay, so overall, we've just given in all of our different types of stuff when it comes to all of that, and now what we're going to be doing is we are going to now open up all of these chests, well, caches, and see what we can actually get. So. That being said, we're going to leave the emerald encrusted ones to the end because those are the ones that contain the BOE blues, which are 100%, and then the junk ones we're going to open now. So, that being the case, let's open that up. That's 180, and we've got a 130 plus. We're looking for anything that is worth a decent amount of gold, and we're just going to keep opening it until something actually pops up. That's actually worth a bit. Now, the greens don't sell for an awful lot of gold, so maybe something of note when you're actually doing that. Some of them do go for a high price, some of them don't, but for most other servers, instead of my server, they can go for a little bit more than just a few hundred gold. And just so you are aware, because the prices of my transmog are heavily farmed on my server. So, that's all of the greens done, so we've got a nice amount there. And now let's open up the chests and see what we actually get. So that's 376, uh, plus the, hey, there we go. We've got the Serpent Slicer. Serpent Slicer valued at 2,959 gold. Pretty damn happy with all of that right there. Then we've got the Mimiradun's Greaves, which are 717 gold. So that's pretty damn handy right there. Let's open up another one. We've got the Aegis of Stormwind. That usually is a very good seller. We've got the Giant Slayer Braces. Those braces actually do tend to sell relatively fast. We actually got an enchant formula as well. That's only 46 gold, so meh. But the uh, Winged Helm, 885. And then we've got the Heiberg's Helm, 409 gold. So overall, pretty awesome. I'm kind of happy with all of that right there. It's roughly around about 9,743 gold worth of transmog. And you can do this on in literally like a few minutes a day, just farming up all of the rares. And then at the end of the week, just trade them in. This isn't like something that you should do like on an hourly basis, it's something that I would recommend you do moving forward, but not on a hourly farming basis, otherwise you're just gonna lose gold and you're just gonna waste yourself time. If you want to just top up your transmog market, then this is a good way in order to do it by just doing this as a casual farm as well, because we've covered casual farm for materials, we've done it for battle pets, so why not we do one for transmog? So that being said guys, that is pretty much everything for today. Have a lovely rest of the day and if you wish to donate, we've got two days left of the PDSA fundraiser. The link is at the top of the video for today. 
Other than that guys, have an awesome rest of the day and I shall see you in the next video, which will be tomorrow. If you want to support the channel and help make the channel even better, then why not check out the Patreon? Members get additional info, gold making resources and Patreon specific content. The link is located in the description down below. Thank you and have an awesome day.